up, dude. I don't even taste the tequila. Yeah, I mean, either, but I poured a big one shot in there. Mm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna kick in. Cheers to whoever is drinking tequila right now. What made you do this procedure? I he told wanted her, bigger boobs. I told her if she didn't do it, I was gonna leave her. She started crying. She got it done. I go do my titties. No, just kidding. Cheat dig as fuck. So, I decided to reshoot the video because the other one sucked. Now I'm doing the McBong. Or McBang. What is it even called? And answering some Q&A's and talking about my experience. So, for those of you who don't know who I am. <laughs> damn the whole sushi roll unwrapped. My name is Adriana, but a lot of people call me Nani. This is my boyfriend, Richie. My real name is Richard. Okay, Richie. So what did I get done? I had a breast augmentation done, I had lipo done, and a mini BBL. Another question was who got me in contact with my doctor or how did I find him? Um, my mom actually had plastic surgery done herself this January. So I already kind of knew that I kind of wanted to go with her doctor, but I was still in contact with other doctors in Mexico. So from start to finish, how does the process look? So like I said, my mom, that was my mom's doctor. So she was just a text away. We set up a date for a consultation. And so um, at the consultation, we talked about everything I, that I wanted and I didn't want. So last minute, I wanted lipo because it was super cheap to do it so I was like might as well but that was never part of the plan I was only supposed to just go for a breast augmentation so things that I wanted was also silicone things I didn't want I didn't want a Kim K butt and so I told her not to do anything to my butt because taking all that extra fat and love handles was gonna make my already butt pop and then um, she does like these ab marks. I didn't want that. I told her just take everything out and don't leave me no markages. My surgery was August 13. Um, it was on a Thursday. I was really hesitant about getting my surgery then. I didn't want to because we still had that weekend um, that we wanted to go to Manzanillo. And she told me that she's, she had opening on Monday, but that she really recommended me to do it on Thursday because you're supposed to be like 15 days post-op before you can leave Mexico. Thank God she like, I listened to, to her because I ended up being at the hospital for three days instead of just being like one whole day and leaving the next day, which really sucked. Before my surgery, I had to do three different things. I had to go get my meds, I had to uh, do a breast ultrasound, and I had to get labs done because if not, they weren't gonna be able to do the surgery and I don't really know what labs I got done but I do know that they test you for COVID and if you come out positive they will not do the surgery my doctor she was super super cool nice she's young she has so many certifications I'll probably do like a screenshot of all the certifications she has on her Instagram and like post them here she's she's so nice huh babe yeah she was really nice Yep. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. Like, las mujeres de Colima son bien diferente, and like their accent, la forma de ser, like, it was just really nice. So, like I said, I was at the hospital for three days. I became super anemic. She took five liters out of me. I would try to get up, and it, it just didn't work. I was in bed for two whole days. The third day, I was finally able to get up. I mean, the second day, I think I got up to shower, didn't I? Yeah. But it was still like, she was like, oh, you need to just stay. Recovery homes. I did not stay at any recovery home. My dad is actually from Colima. Sorry that I'm talking and chewing. My dad's actually from Colima. So we had family over there. But this time, um, 
he ended up running out some cabañitas out next to La Playa El Real next to Tecoman. So we just drove to my lymphatic massages Monday to Friday because I only got, got five massages in Colima. Um, so yeah, we would drive every day. It was like a 40 minute drive, which was not crazy. And I wasn't in terrible pain. Like I had pain pills and it was fine. Mm -hmm. The hardest part though was the lymphatic massages because man, the first day I, my blood pressure dropped. So I almost blacked out. Um, or I don't know if it was my blood pressure or my sugars dropped. I almost passed out. I threw up and I was like crying like a little girl, you guys crying. That is painful man it, it was only painful like literally all the massages in mexico except like the last one so the first four like the first two horrible the third day it was okay and then the fourth day i was like getting used to it but man the first two i was crying like crazy i, I my boyfriend was like feeling so bad for me but he was there through everything and yes he stayed with me at the hospital for the three days doing nothing besides winning winning the highest scores on what was it subway Some surfers. surfers yeah his max score i'll even put the screenshot here if he still has I don't it. Have it you reached it i don't know oh i had three drains i had two in my front bladder and then one right in the middle of my crack sorry so the one in the back had a bombita and it was the one where you would um accumulate the liquid the front ones you would just put gauze and then a pad over it and it would uh, be absorbing it throughout the day and I would change it as I needed to be changed as it needed to be changed but the one in the back it got super irritating to the point first whole week complete week Thursday to Thursday I was over it I wanted that thing out because it was so painful like to lay down it would hurt and luckily I mean I wasn't in Mexico for my whole recovery so I got it taken out a week and a day after and I was so relieved afterwards man when I left Mexico I still had stitches everywhere I wasn't able to remove those in Mexico because like I said I didn't stay there for my full recovery um, I was supposed to take those out within the first two weeks and so I just made an appointment here at my local um, clinic and they just took them out there. Okay, people were asking me what the recovery time looks like. So I want to say like overall worst, worstest pains are the first week and a half. And after that, you can definitely be on your own because I was forced to be on my own. So the first three days I stayed at the hospital and then from Saturday to Saturday, my boyfriend took care of me over there in Tecoman. Basically, he was I don't, he was doing everything for me. Um, definitely take somebody with patience because recovery sucks and you run out of your own patience. And he never lost his patience with me, which I'm super blessed because I know my mom would have taken care of me. But like, she didn't have to because he was always there doing everything I needed to. Huh. Yep. I'm the guy who took care of her. Over there. Over there where? In <clears throat> Mex. Go put a shot in that. What? A shot in the... Put a shot in the... What do you want? Whatever. Cause... My boyfriend definitely took care of me. Did everything everything that needed to be done for me he helped me shower he helped me go to the bathroom he would empty out my bombita he would help me put my faja on what else babe i don't know name it he probably did it you guys um so on to the second week um that's when we were already back over here in washington and my boyfriend as a semi driver so he works like on his own so he didn't have to quarantine coming back for sure if he um worked with other people like maybe he should have but we weren't even infected and um so he left me we were back saturday literally actually sunday at one in the morning we got to my house 
so on the second week, my boyfriend ended up leaving me, and I was kind of like not ready for him to leave me because I was still like not fully healed, and I was kind of scared to be on my own. And so, um, I know I was super upset, but he had to go back to work because we had spent a lot of money in Mexico, and um, fucking bills. They don't. They don't stop. No. And so, actually, this I, I don't know if it was the first or the second day, they were all gone. Nobody was here, and I was by myself. I left my phone in my room, and I washed my mouth, and I went to the kitchen, and I, my sugars dropped. I felt it. I was panicking because I was home alone. My phone was in my room, and I didn't know what to do. Like, I was going to yell, and nobody was going to hear me. So, I was freaking out. I ran to go get some sugar cereal. I chowed that down and then I chugged down some milk because I don't even know if milk helps but I was just like I cannot black out right now I'm not gonna land on my face like this is not gonna happen right now so I grabbed a gallon and went to go sit down and I was just chugging on that and like in unos cinco minutos se me pasó but like I, I still sat there for like 10 minutes and then like literally five minutes later my brother walked in and he was like Hi, and then I was like, I almost blacked out right now. And he's like, oh, damn. And I was like, well, I was just thankful that he showed up, like, not even hella later. And I was just like, even if I would have fainted, somebody would have, like, been here ASAP. And so, yes, in the second week, you are still in pain. The third week, you're not in so much pain, but your skin just is irritating because... Like, you just want it to be over, but it's your skin's not done healing. <clears throat> I was a little more active. I mean, the third and the fourth week, I was doing more stuff around the house. But the fourth week, I did go back to work. I was super scared because it was an eight-hour shift, and I wasn't sure how I was going to do, but I managed. And honestly, I think going back to work really helped me heal more because I wasn't just sitting on the sofa after I was done doing my chores, being lazy or like eating like horrible because all you want to do is eat when you're home. And Cheers to whoever is drinking tequila right now. Shit, I'm not. You guys, I never eat or drink Red Bulls. I just cement the whole today. It was a cheat day. I did so good this whole week. So good compared to all of the other days. And I just wanted my favorite food in the whole world. Sushi and spicy chicken teriyaki. And a little bit of something sweet to drink. So, on the fifth week, I actually ordered my abdomen, abdomen board so I could wear it that week. And I ordered new fajas. So, I'm not wearing them now, but they... They are tight. Those things snatch me the fuck up. I was getting skin folds on my stomach and I was getting really scared thinking like that I wasn't healing properly but my mom was always reassuring me that that was going to go away with time um, as well with the, the cord feeling on the sides of your stomach and then like the hardness on your, 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 your tummy, your tummy, whatever. Um, so I was just always scared but she always like, you know, um, comforted me and telling me that everything was going to be okay. So I am actually on my sixth week now. A month and a half post-op. What made you do this procedure? I you told wanted her, bigger boobs. I told her she didn't do it. I was going to leave her. She started crying. She got it done. go do my titties. No, just kidding. First of all, because I am fucking young. That's why I did it. Because I've always been flat chested. Um, the peso was from 20 to 21. El, al dollar. And girl, if you're going to get anything done, go do it now. I did it all. And I was only supposed to go get one thing done. I started working now in 2017. And it was the ending of 2017. So I've only had two years working out because I'm not going to count this year. Because I have not been to the gym since March <sighs> since coronavirus and I was already slacking from January to March I was slacking um, uh, so with my fitness journey I started November 2017 and 
within the first three months I dropped 15 pounds within the first two months I would want to say I dropped 15 pounds I maintained that off for basically a whole year because I did change the way I was eating I would always go out and eat fast food all the time I started cooking more I started not drinking Red Bulls never all I would drink was water and um, you know you you have to leave old habits it's a new lifestyle you can't just keep eating like shit and go to kill yourself at the gym and expect to lose weight like you're not gonna do it that way anyways bad habits always come back so I think this year in January my bad habits were coming back and I was always eating out and really slacking at the gym and so this was the time perfect timing to you know I slacked I gained all this coronavirus weight and I was like might as well take it all out I do plan on still working out um, I'm actually thinking of just doing two months post-op and right after go hit the gym and see how it goes I actually already got the okay from my doctor but I'm scared just because I haven't gone to the gym since March really I mean I've had a workout here a workout there but I'm scared to be sore again and then like I think that's the only thing I'm scared of because I don't I think I'm I'm good to start stretching all my muscles because they need to be stretched another question was uh, why didn't you wait to have your own kids as some of you guys know um, I do have a boyfriend who has two daughters and I didn't wait because like I said I'm young and for my lipo and mini BBL it doesn't matter but for my breasts I mean I don't know I just don't care I'm young and my kids are gonna come when they come whenever they come and I'm living for now not for when they come you know I don't know I, I don't know another question was will this affect you later when you have kids I don't think my BBL and my lipo will affect me at all but my breastfeeding might and the only thing I can say is like well we'll see how long I can breastfeed we'll see if I can even breastfeed but I don't know if any of you guys know who or I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys watch who uh, Elsie Guevara she just is a new mother this year and she was struggling but she also has implants so she made a video on that topic so if I ever struggle in the future I'll probably reference to that video other people asked me if I had any regrets so far and the only regret is probably maybe going a little bit bigger but blah, blah, maybe going bigger on my chest area taking care of my BBL adding more to my hips and um, researching because like I said yeah lipo and BBL were not part of um, what I initially was gonna get done but if you know you're gonna go get something done and you know you want to do other procedures and you don't even know that the vessel was gonna drop so much if you're gonna go out of states um, research everything that you would like to do because because you just never know and better be safe than sorry like I was I could have prevented skin folds on my abdomen if I would have been wearing my abdomen compression board from the start and I actually got like a little bit of a, a rash right here and it kind of stayed like a scar because of the faja me estaba tallando mucho and I didn't get no foams also I don't know why my doctor didn't give me at least foams but I'm not gonna blame her for anything because she gave me a paper of like post um, post uh, instructions and it said to ask for that stuff and it's my fault I read that last week can you fucking believe that pain levels so within the first week and a half you are within some pain I don't feel like you're in pain constantly you are on pain pills so you really don't feel it I want to say the lymphatic massages is when you feel it the most because I don't know if, if for me I wasn't taking my pain pills in time for them to be activated when I was getting the massages but man the massages 10 out of 10 painful man and at the end of the massages they also do um, like an ultrasound uh, on your body where you have more hardness 
for inflammation. So that ultrasound helps the inflammation. Another question, where and how many incisions did you get done? Um, so I have I have two under my boob for the lipo. I have I did my my breasts through the nipple. I have two I have four on my bladder because two were for the drains and two were for the um, lipo I'm pretty sure or I don't know maybe they used all four for a lipo. I have two on the upper of my butt and then two right up here on the middle back and then one here somewhere. You can't even see them anymore. And one here. I scarred pretty beautifully so I was super happy about that. Advice I would give you guys is do your research. I've already mentioned this. Do your research because even if you don't think you're gonna do another surgery, you might. So do your research. So let's talk about fajas. Um, your doc, my doctor gave me my first two fajas. Oh, obviously I paid with the bundle, but um, she gave me my first two fajas, and those were size mediums, and they were Morena Recovery, and I googled morena recovery to see if i could buy like a small no mommy chis i can't remember but i will screenshot and post it here they're expensive expensive fajas um and i also got my bras from my doctor she gave me only one um breast bra and that one was a 32 c b slash c so it fit pretty tight. I didn't really like it. I hate. I hated wearing my first two fajas. Like there was a little bit of a gap right here, opening, and man, it would pinch. Like it would pinch my skin, and I had so many bolas like right in here, like big bolas knots, and um, it would freaking be painful, and I hated wearing it. I think it wasn't as painful until like the ending of the second week. I was just like. Get out of here, Faha. It was my first stage Faha, if you would say. So has a little opening on the bottom area, so you don't have to take off the whole Faha. The second stage Faha was a size small, and it was Faha's M and D. I've seen that they're on Amazon, but I'm not too sure if the Fajas are on Amazon. I know they have like the abdomen board on Amazon, but that Faha, damn, that thing is tight, 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 man, tight. I would feel suffocated wearing that thing and um but that one i feel like it did its job like i i wasn't complaining um about it but like i think the one thing i'm complaining about fajas is right here it's not long enough get the gala bien feo aquí like it would leave me rare and so i would untie the tops right here and then just have that little bra strap that's here, I would tighten it as much and it would just hang on my boobs. I totally forgot to mention about my third stage Bajas. I ordered these off an of Instagram website called Curve Cartel and they do the job, just the seams on the shorts goes up a lot. I got 300 because I wanted a natural look and they look really natural. But um, how she does it, she gives you this cup and you put it on what you already have to measure your volume. And then she puts this other cup that doubled the volume that I already had. So it ended up being 600. And I put like a shirt uh, over the cups just to see if I liked it. I think I have a mini video of me trying it on. And um, well, I had 300 already and then she added 300 so my boobs are 600 right now but that's the math that she gave me when we had our consultation i mean i'm a full c and i love it do i wish i would have gone bigger yes lipo it's painful because of the lymphatic massages um even when you try to lay a certain way it kind of hurts sometimes um there is numbing all over when you eat you scratch like you don't feel like you're even getting to able to scratch because it's numb. And then now that I'm on my sixth week, within my fifth and sixth week, I feel a lot of burning. Like sometimes I'm just slouched on my bed on the backboard and then I get up and I feel burning all over my back. So I don't know if that's a side effect of lipo, but 
that's been happening now um, you do feel like you have um, like lines like lines on your stomach because of the way she libels obviously so that's pretty normal uh, well at least it was normal for me it feels like there's cordovones inside of your panza my bbl i didn't take care of it so i mean i had a new breast i could not lay on my stomach because of the breast I could only lay on my back, so I didn't get to take care of my BBL. I never got a booty pillow, and it was just hard overall. Maybe that's why they do like a breast by themselves and then BBL and lipo together. But it is what it is. I still love the way my body looks now. So, down to the last two main questions Who was your doctor? My doctora. Yes, a doctora, because it was a girl. She works in Colima, Colima. My doctor was Doctora Ileana Diaz Anguiano. She is amazing for sure, 100% recommend her. She's beautiful. And the last most wanted question, what was your cost for the surgery? And I'm gonna say this in pesos and add it up here, okay? So for my breast augmentation, it was 56,000 pesos. For my liposculpture 360 and BBL, it was 55,000 pesos. And so if you add that together, it's 111,000 111, pesos, right? If you do both of the surgeries together, she discounts you 11,000 pesos. So you pay 100,000 pesos for both of the surgeries, the breast, lipo, and BBL. That surgery was taking place in Clinica Guadalupana and when I was when we were driving up to that clinic and how we saw the outside looking, I was kind of skeptical and was for sure judging the area of the clinic. Once you get into your room, it's so beautiful and it's it was really nice. I'll see if I have any pictures and I'll insert here. Um, continuing with the cost, I had to get my meds. It was around four thousand pesos. Uh, for the labs at Laboratorio Preciado Montes, it was um, 1,500. The breast ultrasound was 800 pesos. And then, aparte the massages and the two fajas, the massages were 10,000 pesos and the two fajas were 2,300 pesos. It ends up totaling to 118,000 pesos, roughly around there. I didn't pay that. I paid like 5200 they pagan el dollar a lo que es and so my mom's debit card was only charged four thousand eight hundred dollars and then she got two like fees because we had to make two transaction fees and so basically it was four thousand nine hundred plus the that included the massages and the two fajas and the surgery and then aparte of cash we paid meds labs and the breast ultrasound which was like three hundred dollars so if you add that up, I only paid about 2500 That was not including the hotel and the flight. We did stay in Cabañas over there, and we, me and my boyfriend flew back, but we drove there. So that concludes my video. I didn't even get to do like the, my whole mukbang because I could not eat and talk. I thought it was going to be easy, but... So, thank you for watching my very first video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Maybe I'll keep do doing videos. I don't know. I feel like it was super, super hard. Follow me on Instagram. It's N-A-N-I-I Rivera with the double A at the end, R-I-V-E-R-A. I'll link it right here. Follow my boyfriend too. I don't know his username, but I'll link it here. <laughs> Don't be hitting up on my mans, okay? Thank you for watching this video. Bye, guys. I forgot to give you guys an update on my body, my current body.
最近お前に連絡しないなあ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ